Greetings, and welcome to episode 21. In today's episode, we'll be discussing faith, its strengths and its weaknesses, and how they both affect you. So if you're ready, sit back, relax, and enjoy. So, faith. What is faith? Faith is the intangible item that allows you to hold on to another intangible item. It's like a magnet. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It is... It is... I want to say it's like belief, but it's a little further. It's a little deeper than belief. It is knowing in your heart of hearts that a certain thing will either happen or that a certain thing exists. It could be God, fairies, trolls, dragons, whatever. Religion did not corner the market on faith. Because you would think so because when someone says, what faith are you? They mean what religion are you? But religion is not faith. It has not cornered the market on faith. Faith has been around since before religion. There are other things to have faith in other than God. And uh, the thing about faith, when it concerns God or religion, it should be unnecessary because the whole point of faith is believing in something that you cannot prove. But you have a book that says that it's fact and that it, God exists, thereby giving you proof. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I guess I don't understand the link between faith and religion, because... <laughs> You are taught within these religions that everything in these religious books are facts, thereby negating the necessity for faith because you have proof. I have proof of trees. I don't have to have faith or even believe. They're there. They're right there. <laughs> Belief works upon. It works in the same mechanical sense but it's not at it's like the surface level it's like the skin belief you believe a certain idea usually because it sounds good once you research that idea that belief is either disproven or proven if it's proven there's proof and you don't require faith or even belief anymore if your findings are based on facts if your findings are based on conjecture or circumstantial evidence or hearsay then then it requires if it is the idea still sounds good then that belief requires faith the belief in something you can't prove but like I said if you can prove it if you were part of a religion and that religion has taught you that the that holy book is fact is law then you no longer require belief or faith because you have proof which I don't understand I guess I, I, I've never understood why you need faith faith I have faith in me not because I don't know that I exist not that I don't know that I can accomplish things same with me believing in myself these things belief in situations that haven't happened yet I believe I can overcome them I have faith that I'll make it <sighs> but even that isn't required because I have real life experience to draw on I've made it before in similar situations these are facts that's proof so it's it's no longer intangible I've made it before it would actually take some doing to make it so that I wouldn't make it but I still have faith in me I still believe in me 
because it's nobody else's job to do that. If somebody else believes in me or has faith in me, thank you, but it's not required because I believe and have faith in myself wholeheartedly as much faith as you put into whatever you put it into I have that much faith in me first I can't think of a whole lot of things other than my wife and my children to have belief and faith in everything I practice all the ideas I have come to 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 hold as true I see them as facts the ideas and the information or what would you call it the ideas that enforce that idea because my ideas can be backed up with science so they don't require faith because I have facts so that negates the necessity for faith it to me it just is I don't require somebody's opinion or I don't require somebody else's belief system opinion or permission to believe in something to hold something as true and just because you hold something as true doesn't necessarily mean you believe in it there's a tree I don't have to believe in it I hold it as true because it's right there but I don't have to believe for it to exist I believe if I stop believing in trees I bet you I'm still gonna see trees so it is held as a truth it is not a belief it is not faith. I exist and I have conquered many, many obstacles. It is not belief. It is not faith. It is the truth. The things that you would say that I have faith in or that you have faith in, I bet I could prove that your faith is not required because I can show you proof. And once you have proof, faith is not required. Faith is believing in something you cannot prove. Belief is the beginning of that. Belief says, I hold this idea as true. When I say I believe something, it means I believe that this idea is true pending verification. <laughs> I have n I, it's been a very long time since I have just taken an idea at face value and not researched it regardless of if I was right to do so because I've found many ideas that I didn't research that turned out that uh, the facts were presented to me in one way or another and it turned out to be once it's a fact once it's provable belief and faith are not required the upside to faith because of the way the human mind works when you have faith in something it has a profound effect on the psyche and on the emotions and you can move mountains with that faith you can overcome almost any obstacle before I realized that faith wasn't necessary I used faith like a tool like a weapon like anything I needed to use it for that's what I used it for and it's gotten me through some pretty dark times now let's talk about the downside to faith that same faith that did that emotional and mental transformation for you can lock you into a way of thinking that's no longer serving you because that's what faith says no matter what no matter what no matter what that's not how faith works you can have faith in something like I said, faith is the belief, regardless of proof. You can have faith in something, but if you can find solid evidence that that belief is untrue, you have to change your thinking. Don't try and reconcile the difference. Change your thinking. It's okay to have faith. It really is okay to have faith.
but I think you should aim to faith and believe more at yourself. Let the universe be the universe. I have faith. You don't need faith. It's right there. Universe. You're sitting on it, standing on it, walking on it, breathing it. You're going to go to the store and buy some of it. You're going to share some with your friends. Certain things need no permission, no such permission to exist. You don't need any such permission to know and hold as a truth that something exists. But once something has been proven with fact wrong, you are obligated as an intellectual being to observe the facts and alter your beliefs to fit the facts. That's how that works. And see, the problem with that comes into attributing sayings to God. Like God said, oh, and that's where, that's where the trouble comes in. Nobody knows what God said. And the, oh, he wrote it in a book. He didn't write that book. He didn't write any of the holy books. Wise men wrote those stories and parables. Wise men. I'll give you that. Great teachers. Some of the greatest teachers that ever walked. Some of those books were written by the greatest teachers that ever walked. Not all of them. But only one of those books is claimed to be the exact word of God. I've never heard God give me the rules. Forty years old and I've never had God give me the rules. I've had him give me directions. I've had him give me tips and pointers. I've had him lay out breadcrumbs. He's never said, do this, don't do that. Ever. Not once. And I hold it as a truth that he wouldn't do that to anybody else either. I don't think that I'm special in seven billion people, that I'm the only one not getting the rules, really. Everyone else is getting the rules. And you feel like dirt for breathing in and out, and that felt, oh, it felt good. Oh, I'm a sinner. Oh. <laughs> God didn't say that. Somebody said that to you, and you, you agreed. You held that as a truth. But oftentimes within religion, it's not so much a matter of getting permission to hold something as a truth. It's being ostracized or alienated if you don't hold it as a truth. Being punished for not holding it as a truth. And some people who can still can't wrap their heads around some things will still stay in that religion without holding certain things as truth just so they can still fit in because they don't want to lose their friends or their family that's where faith goes wrong have faith in yourself have faith in your ability to discern fact from fiction have faith in your ability to question because it says that it even says that in the Bible it doesn't say if you want stuff from God ask and you shall receive no, what it says, it, it's concerning seeking proof of the things I say. Knock and it shall open, ask and he shall receive. The universe never said blind faith. The universe said ask. There's proof. And I can show it to you. That's what the universe said. I could show you where I found my proof, but you might not see it that way. You might just see words, words, whatever. <laughs> I've read a lot of good books. There's more than one, two, three, four books out there. There's more than one path out there. It all leads to the same tree. The tree of life. That's where we're all headed if we're on a spiritual or religious journey. I just think that people on a religious path are strapping 10 ton rocks to their feet and trying to walk the same path. And then they scoff at us because we can dance and shimmy and <laughs> walk at our own pace up the path. 
because you're not going to threaten me to hold something as a truth. Once you have to threaten somebody to hold something as a truth, your truth is probably not the truth. I've never heard anybody threaten someone over the truth. I've heard people get threatened if they tell the truth, but I've never heard anyone getting threatened for accepting the truth. Unless it's the person that doesn't want you to accept that truth. See, that's where faith becomes a bad thing. Because if someone can force you to have faith in something, then whatever you're putting your faith in is false. And you're doing it for the wrong reasons. And we pass this inheritance down to our children. I say let them decide for themselves. I've never pushed religion onto my kids, ever. But when they come home and say, uh, I'm staying the night at so-and-so's house this weekend, and then after we go to church, they're going to bring me home. I say, that's fine. And I point out, if you ever want to learn anything about religion, you come ask me. I know quite a bit. And my kids are cool with that. I'm not trying to control their journey. Their journey is their journey. Oh, you got to do it like me. I would love for them to do it like me. But the fastest way for them to go the, in the other direction is to have them walk my path at gunpoint. Instead of developing their own truths, their own beliefs, their own faith. But what if they fall astray? Then that's the path that they are going to go down. I have faith in their journey. Maybe not in them. There's not one journey that does not eventually end up at the tree of life. Not one. So I have faith in their journey that no matter where that path leads, if it leads straight down into hell at first, I know that eventually she's, my children are still going to get to the tree of life. I have faith in the journey, which pretty much is saying I have faith in the universe, that they're going to end up where they're supposed to end up. Well, that would mean we have no control over our actions. And what about free will? What if free will was always an illusion? What if free will just meant I'm going to have six sugars instead of two? What if we only get to control the arbitrary, unimportant things? I'll have soda instead of water. And then you still don't even know if that was your decision. Ah, but you have faith. You have faith in that it was told you that you have free will. I just hold it as a, I hold it as a truth. And I think that even that truth is limited. Because there are certain things that have happened to me in my life that I felt like I didn't cause it. Nobody I knew caused it. It was just a thing that happened to me. Something, somewhere. It didn't feel like it was a natural moment. It didn't feel like Oh, lightning hit the branch and the branch fell. It felt like somebody had purposely put this obstacle in my path. But it wasn't anybody I know. It wasn't me. But here this thing is. So maybe my free will was how I dealt with the obstacle. But there was no way to avoid the obstacle. That I didn't have a choice about. So I think that even free will is only such to an extent. That is, that is a truth that I hold. But I have faith in my path that it's not going to lead me astray if I stick to my path. The only times my path has ever hurt me is when I abandoned the path for whatever reason. Whether it was a girl or I'm mad at the path because it's not going the way I want or whatever. But me deviating from the path is the only time I've ever been hurt on this path. I'm not going to lie. Sometimes the little detours can be fun. But it doesn't change the fact that that's the only time I've ever been hurt is leaving the path. And that doesn't mean physically. That could be mentally, emotionally, whatever. Or physically. Just... Not sticking to the path was a bad idea, and the universe didn't have any problem showing me. 
<laughs> One of those burn your hand on the stove moments. And I, yeah. My hands would be completely covered in bandages right now. <laughs> I've burned my hands on the stove several times. <laughs> Mmm, <clears throat> sip of coffee. Ah, go juice. <laughs> anyway, yeah, faith is good to an extent, but let that faith evolve into a truth. Let it be true for you. Saying faith is is almost a question. I have faith. Until someone disproves it. No. Hold it as a truth. The truth is unshakable. But if you find proof to the contrary. If you find facts and evidence to the contrary of your truth. You have to disregard what you held as true. You have to. As an intellectual being. As an intellectual being we are endowed with logic and reason. There's a reason for that. Because if we just let our heart lead the way everywhere, oh my God, could you imagine the world we would live in? Not every heart is geared towards happy sunshine. And then once that negative person turns those happy sunshines to negativity, they're going to go on a rampage just like the negative person. And everything would be true and everything would be believable and we'd be going in every direction at once and no one would be on the path. And so we have logic and reason. To, to, to kind of counterbalance that empathy and compassion. If in fact you are working with empathy and compassion, you could be working with anything, but you still have your logic and reason to balance it. Well, I'm feeling like an ass today. I'm going to stab someone in the face. Logic and reason. You want to go to prison? No. Well, I guess I'm not stabbing people in the face today. Logic and reason. You cannot discount those just because of faith. Well, I have faith. I, it doesn't, I don't recall any spiritual path telling you to suspend your intellectual prowess at all for any reason just because you believe something. If you feel like you have to suspend your logic and reason to believe something, maybe do a little bit of research on what it is you're trying to hold as a truth, regardless of what logic and reason say. And so you could say, well, logic and reason tell me that there's no such thing as God. There is no invisible man in the sky. None. Never was, never will be. You don't need to believe or disbelieve that. You know why there's no invisible man in the sky? Because God is part of the sky. Or should I say the sky is part of God. Think about how small our planet is in the grand scheme of things. And how small our solar system is within our galaxy. And how small our galaxy is within the universe. We're just a tiny little part. The sky is just a tiny little part of what makes up God. You don't need faith that there's an invisible man in the sky. You are the invisible man. You're made in his image. You're a slice of that hologram. These things can be proven. There are scientific facts that I can fall back on. I no longer have to hold these as beliefs that evolve into faith because t these things that I'm talking about are tangible items. They have proof. Once you have proof, you're no longer required to have faith. I can prove your God exists, and my God exists, and their God exists. I can prove it's all the same entity. I can also prove that if we all came together and brought our different ideas together, we'd have all the missing parts that we believe each one of our journeys is missing. Which is why I don't hold to one religion. Because I found truth in each one. Except Islam.
not gonna lie I just I it just sounds it sounds exactly like Christianity but from a different point of view so I guess there's truth in that but I mean yeah that's just yeah it's almost it sounds exactly like the Christian Bible change the names to protect the innocent kind of thing and their 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 uh, their prophet actually lived historic historically documented he actually lived look at me smoking <laughs> I don't believe that makes me non-spiritual just because I'm smoking. If you don't smoke, you don't have to. I, uh, I think that it is a shame that in this day and age, we still need things like belief and faith. These should be jumping off points. Belief and faith shouldn't be the goals, and people like to make those the goals. Well, I want something to believe in. <sighs> These are jumping off points. Belief says, this idea sounds good to me. Faith says, I hold this idea as truth. The intellectual mind says, logically, I should go and research these ideas and use my reasoning to discern whether these are true or, or not. You don't need to wait for permission to believe something and you don't have to have somebody else's beliefs or truths foisted upon you because you have nothing to believe in. Oh, I don't believe. So, And don't, don't be so quick to jump to believe something just because you don't believe anything. And just because you believe everything, don't be so quick to jump to some belief. Do a little bit of research. Because if you can find the facts, you can find the evidence, belief and faith are no longer required because faith is the belief in something that has no proof. But science nowadays, the, uh, excuse me, <coughs> The discipline of noetics says that all of these things are scientifically provable, factual, that makes them substantial, that makes them tangible, which means you no longer require faith to hold it as truth. And I'm just breaking it down like that because most people, if they hear a scientist talk, they'll believe him. And I'd say 95, at least 95% of the people on this planet, if they hear it from a scientist, they're more likely to hold it as truth than if you got it from me. And I'm telling you that you can get this from me, and you can go and you will find scientific fact backing up the things I say. You already know what faith is. Faith is the belief in something you can't prove. But once you've proven it, once you've read that book, even if it's your religious book that purports to be the absolute truth and the law, you no longer require faith. You just read the proof. You no longer require belief. You just read the proof. You don't need my permission to believe it or not. But the things that I want you to have faith in are different from the things they want you to have faith in. I say... Believe that there is a God, that there is a source, that the universe is alive and is aware of you. All the he said, she said, yeah, that's up for debate and has been debated for the last 2,000 years. Bear that in mind. Nobody can come to an agreement on what is actually truth. And if they can't come to an agreement, how can any of us come to an understanding and hold as truth the he said, she said aspects of a religion. Let's go back to the teacher of that particular path. Christianity would be Jesus. I'm not even sure who it would be for the Hebrew faith. And for the Muslims, it would be Muhammad. 
So we go back to the teachers. What did they say? Don't worry about the, oh, and, and 300 years later, someone wrote this in the Bible. Oh, you know what? 300 years after the teacher was born, I'm not holding what he says about the teacher as fact. I'm just, I'm not going to. He wasn't there. And that speaks to the he said, she said. Do I believe there was a God? Yes. Do I believe that a Jesus figure lived and died back then? Yes. Do I believe that Muhammad rose and created Islam? That's believable. Not saying I hold it as a truth, but it's believable. But if they're not teaching the same thing, how to create and maintain a connection with source, how to liberate yourself from the ego, <clears throat> excuse me, how to free your mind from your own captivity, if that's not what they're teaching, there's nothing I need from you. You don't serve me if you're just trying to get me to serve you. That serves no one. And, and, and requires only your faith to keep it going. If I'm just trying to get you to serve me, I only need your faith. I need your faith in what I'm saying based on the fact that I can't prove it. Once I can prove it, you no longer need me. I've proven it to you. You no longer need me. It is now a truth. Go seek your version of it. Go seek your... When I say your version, I mean your interaction with the universe based on the truth that you have now gained. Your unique perspective on the truth. That, because we can agree that this is true, that this point is true. We can agree on that. But I guarantee you we're both seeing it differently. And then the con point of contention is going to be because we can't see it each other's way and there's a we're not supposed to the fact that we hold this as a truth should be important enough we both agree we both agree let's get moving because all the little side stuff that's your own unique perspective that is your own unique relationship to source to God to the universe whatever you want to call it but just remember once you've proven it you no longer require faith or belief. <laughs> All right, getting on to the 30 minute mark. I really do hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, if, you, if you did, please go ahead and hit the like button. Favorite it if you would like. Uh, and if you would like to keep coming back and keep getting more information, or you just like the sound of my voice, Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. But until next time, you hang in there. <laughs>